Oh, back in chapter six, we are on page three. So what we've talked so far is intercompany transactions. And we talked about um, what we're going to do after. We talked about we're adding income taxes in. We've got a new schedule, the unrealized realized profit schedule or intercompany profit schedule. And we've talked about a whole bunch of basic transactions and why we're getting rid of it. So what I want to talk about now is intercompany inventory profits. So now we're moving to profits that are left in the circle in inventory, in non debits and then depreciable assets. So we're going to start with the inventory. Okay. So we can only recognize profit in inventory or other assets if they're sold to an external party to the consolidated circle. So if the sub sells inventory of the parent, URSA, and remember we learned sub selling inventory of the parent is upstream. So sub sells upstream. So we have an upstream sale and then the parent sells it to an outside party, we can recognize the profit. So we saw that in chapter on page one, right at the bottom where we did our little um, income statement or gross profit statements. But if some of the inventory sold to the parent by the sub, so upstream, remains at year end, we have to eliminate the gross profit that the sub recognized on the sale. Then when that inventory is finally sold, and by that I mean outsell, or to a party external to entities, we can recognize the gross profit at that point. So we're going to keep track of these unrealized, then realized profits in a schedule. So before we go through the numeric example, I'm just going to try something. I'm going to use Lego because usually I'm standing in front with a big whiteboard drawing things and moving things around. So I thought this might work as online. You can tell me later. So pull out the little sheet. It was an extra sheet I put under your chapter six notes. And it has the parent, the sub. Notice we've identified downstream and upstream. I've got a circle around these two entities because that's going to be our consolidated entity, whatever's in the circle. And here I have some external organizations. So the parent is going to be selling red inventory. The sub's going to be selling black inventory. And I'm going to show their gross profit or their markup with a blue piece of leg over here and a gray one over here. Okay? So I'm going to go through a downstream one first, parent selling to the sub. So parents got red inventory. So the parent decides to sell to the sub. Okay, probably one of the reasons they uh, bought them. Let's say this is the manufacturer, so they make these little guys. This is the distributor, and then these are all the people that buy them at the end. So the parent goes downstream and sells the red inventory to the sub. Now, forget the circle for a second, is that a valid entry that both can put on their books, a sale and a purchase? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So the parent sells it to the sub and of course they added on their blue profit. So they sold the red inventory and they added on their blue gross profit. Now, normally during the course of a year, the sub would take this inventory and sell it to outsiders and they'd add on their little gray profit. So the inventory would have two profit layers on it. Blue from the parent and gray from the sub. Again, totally normal. On the books of the parent and the sub, it's fine. So it's right. And from a consolidated point, because it came from inside and left externally, we recognize all of that. Okay? So, the problem is when the parent sells to the sub, and so they put their profit on. 
again, on the parents' books and on the subs' books, it's totally fine. 100% right to record these. I made a purchase, I made a sale. But the problem is, at year end, if inventory is still in the circle, we can't for consolidated purposes record the gross profit of the seller. So The parent sold the sub the inventory and profit. Totally normal. And normally the sub would sell it outside and then we could record both their profits. However, in consolidation land at year end, okay, so let's just stop. It's year end and this is like a little snapshot. Here's the inventory sitting here. It hasn't had a chance to be sold out, okay? So, from a consolidation perspective. Remember, now we're looking at the circle, okay? Remember how we do a consolidation. We, as the parent, print off our financial statements. The sub prints off their financial statements and gives it to us. Of course, it's done electronically now. This is much easier to download into software. Okay, so we pull the parent statements, we pull the sub statements, and then we add them together, right, and make adjustments. Well, if we pull the parent statements, we're pulling the gross profit off. But because it's still in the circle, we cannot recognize that. This has to go somewhere. Let's put it down here. So we have to get rid of this off the consolidated statements. Okay, I'm going to say it one more. We get the parent statements. We get the sub statements, right? And on the parent statements is the sale, okay? And it's recorded gross profit. But because it's the end of the year and the sub has not sold that inventory outside, we can't recognize gross profit because again, in this circle, we'd just be moving this around and adding on profit, which isn't a real transaction because you can't sell something to yourself and record profit. So, We've got the statements with the blue profit written on it, and we've got the substatements. We want to add them together. If we're doing that, we have to recognize that, ooh, some of this inventory is left. This blue guy has to be thrown away. So, we're going to make a little note. When inventory is left, not sold outside the circle. So is remaining at year end. We have unrealized profits. The parent recognized them, but should it be recognized? No, it's got to be unrealized. So we have to take it off and throw it away. Now, the next year, because remember, our subs books, there's blue things still sitting there. It's okay, but not for the circle. So the next year, the inventory is sold outside with the subs. So we've got two layers of profit on it, one from last year and one from this year. So can we recognize both those colors? Yes. Okay. But again, next year we get the parent statements again and the subs. Does the parent have the sale on it? No, because that was last year. But we have to recognize both the gross profit of the parent and the sub. So the next year
when inventory sold ed or external let's put that so we're clear both the subs and parents gross profit has to be realized in this case just gonna draw a little line here um, if downstream we'll have to add parents gross profit back on okay so and what this is called is realized and this is unrealized okay so let me do the second year so here's the sub it's still got blue on it on its own books and it goes and sells it outside and it adds its own profit on it. they both sell for profit so now in consolidation land we go yay that was a sale we can recognize it but only the subs book has their profit on parents doesn't this year I'm gonna write that down assume a downstream sale okay an upstream would all be reversed in following year parents books don't have the sale on them because it was last year so we need to add on to profit the parents gross profit from last year okay so year one would be when the inventory not sold and then year two is the next year so that's how it always flows because if we're constantly assuming FIFO there might be some left at the end the later stuff but then next year they first okay so hopefully that at least allowed you to see the two pieces of profit that can and can't be recognized and when they are so we'll go on to a numeric example in the next video but um, at the end of this chapter let me know if this helped or just confused you more okay see you in the next video